back to the Plunder Den. In this week's episode, we're going to be making a thatched roof hut. So I really wanted to uh, attempt to make another thatched roof. Uh, and I thought uh, building up my Zulu village would be the perfect opportunity uh, to make another thatched roof. So if you recall, in a previous episode, I made a rustic stone house. I think that was the name of the video. Uh, and uh, I used teddy bear fur in that one. And that worked out good. Uh, it was kind of a little messy, uh, I would say. Uh, and I wanted to try something different. Uh, and so I decided to use rope. So I, what I did was I essentially dismantled the rope. Uh, and uh, I've done that before in other episodes where I did it for vines, for a jungle. Uh, but uh, in this episode, uh, it, I thought it would work well for this thatched roof. So let's take a look at it. I kind of looked at several references of... Uh, huts uh, that, you know, Zulus would have lived in. And there actually is quite a wide range. I was actually shocked to see that there were so many different variations of, uh, of huts. So I kind of settled on this particular design, mainly because it was a little more generic. I like the pointy top, was good for, as I like to do. Uh, I'm gonna make a removable top on here so we can play all the way through, the, uh, through this piece of terrain. Uh, and uh, it kind of had the, the mud walls that's what they use, the wicker, and then they just put mud on it. And that's kind of how they uh, built these structures. And so I, I figure I could probably use this for Dungeons and Dragons. Maybe it's even a witch's hut. Whatever. Uh, you, you know, you can uh, use this for a lot of different things. And that's kind of uh, what we've been doing on this channel, is making uh, generic terrain uh, for your tabletop games. All right, so since I built one, uh, I actually do build two in this. And mainly because I just kind of want to build my little Zulu village a little bit faster. So I kind of, I made two in this episode. Uh, I do, sometimes I recommend doing multiple at the same time. You have all the pieces out already. You're already building one. You might as well build a second one. Uh, then you get a couple of structures on there. Definitely down the, in the future here, in the next couple episodes, I kind of want to explore, uh, I kind of want to revisit some of the uh, fences and walls and kind of do some different things there. I want to do a, like a second part to that. Uh, and more of kind of in this vein, I was thinking about maybe doing a Sorn wall or something like that for uh, my Zulu village. But we'll see. We'll see what I come up with. Uh, and that's uh, something I want to do in the future. Uh, so give you guys different variations of, uh, of fences and walls that you can build. All right. If you guys like what we're doing here in the Plunder Den, make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the Plunder Den. And get first-hand information when I start these kind of projects. All right, everyone. Let's get down to the table. Let's start painting and let's start crafting. Okay, so let's start off with a few materials we're going to need for this project. I got some uh, rope here. I got this from the Home Depot. Um, and uh, we're just going to tear that apart. So this is a, actually a little segment that I ripped apart already just so you can kind of see. We're going to use that for the uh, thatched roof. Uh, then we got some of the crafting wire string that I use. Uh, some balsa wood. Uh, we got, uh, I still got some of that willow fence left over from the native fortifications. Some uh, dry decks uh, from DAP, uh, Darwell Compound. Uh, and then I cut these, uh, this is uh, insulation foam, and I just cut it out into these rings. Uh, they're going to be the walls of the uh, of the huts. And then we got some card stock here. Uh, actually, I think this is parts of a Lucky Charm cereal box, yeah. <laughs> Makes for great material. All right, so first thing, uh, measure everything out with my minis. Originally, I had two thicker pieces. That's a half inch and uh, an inch uh, thick uh, piece of insulation foam that I have here uh, to make my walls. And I'm just making sure that the height fits good for my miniatures uh, and uh, everything looks uh, okay. Now, it's pretty rough inside. That's okay. We're going to cover it with a lot of it with drywall compound. Uh, but we're going to glue the two sections together first with some uh, tacky glue here. Uh, and then we'll do a little bit of sanding to kind of even out those things a little bit, uh, but not a whole lot, uh, mainly because I said I'm just going to cover it with drywall anyways. So then I need to make some entranceways. So again, taking my miniature. Now, you would duck into a hut like this, so that it doesn't necessarily have to be the same height. So I made it a little bit lower. This particular miniature is crouching right now, but some of the ones that are standing up straight. So you would duck into there. And then I have uh, the section I kept some of that foam for a doorway, uh, like the, like an overhang on the door. 
And then that's dollar store foam board that I'm going to put the uh, rings and glue them to. Similar to a lot of the train pieces that I built. So you can see that chunk that I left over from cutting out the hole. Then I kind of just sanded it at an angle. Then I just put it on there as an overhang. And uh, that's uh, just showing you that I'm going to glue those to the base. So uh, those are two pieces of that willow fencing. Just a couple of thicker pieces. Just wanted to put a couple timbers at the doorway there. Just kind of make a very rudimentary uh, kind of entranceway. So I just use some tacky glue as usual. I know I keep showing you that, but uh, pretty well for the whole thing, uh, I use uh, tacky glue to, to put all this uh, all this together. All right, so this is after I put everything on, and now I want to. I decided to put a little bit of stones around the base of it. Now those are foam stones. I pre-cut them. They're from other projects. They're leftovers. The only thing that it was is some of them were kind of square, so that was uh, you know I kind of had to sand them down a little bit to make them a little more circular. Uh, to look more like uh, stones that they would have used around that. So now we move to the messy part, the drywall compound. <laughs> and I got my little tools here. I got a little, uh, little spatula kind of thing here for, actually it's used for oil paints. Uh, and then a toothbrush. And I'll show you what I'm going to do with this in a minute here. So really I'm just going to butter this on like, um, uh, like a cake. This looks like a two-layered cake here and I'm putting some icing on it. Now it's, it's kind of hard to smear it like this right now. But if you add the water to it, that's why I got that pickle jar of water over there. Uh, that'll uh, make it a little uh, looser and easier to uh, apply to the surface you're trying to. Now, the great stuff about this uh, that I mentioned in several videos that it it uh, goes on pink and it dries white, so you know completely uh, when this thing is uh, completely dry and ready for your next stage, which would be the black coat. Uh, seal it in with the craft paint. Uh, but. Uh, we're just going to go on uh, here. So just showing you uh, how I'm applying it. And we're going to get to that toothbrush here in a sec. Uh, mainly the toothbrush is the idea is to, uh, is to add some texture to the walls here. So uh, how they built these kind of huts, they use uh, uh, twigs and stuff like that and, uh, and weave them. And then they put mud over top. So I wanted to simulate uh, like the mud. It, it kind of looks really rough and it's just slapped on. Uh, onto the over top twigs so i just wanted to uh, simulate that with a with a toothbrush so i just was showing you i would actually would have done the whole thing first and then gone back with the toothbrush but uh, just for uh, the time purposes i just kind of sped it up a little bit then you can see there this is after i've done all that i've added all that texture with the uh, toothbrush and that's going to give me the look i want when i paint it so now while that's drying, let's uh, let's attack uh, the roof here. So I'm kind of just using this uh, bottle of, uh, of uh, drywall compound as kind of my uh, circular shape that I want to use for the roof. I actually used it to trace out the, the, the size of the base too. So, and I made the top just a tad bigger than, because than, I wanted to overhang a little bit over top of the base, right? Uh, and then I cut it into a circular shape and then I cut it halfway to the middle, and then you can fold it over like this. So this is how you're going to make your dome roof. Now, make sure you have the uh, label facing up, uh, because uh, we're going to be adding uh, the thatched roof part to that top. We're not really going to see that. We're going to cover it with black paint, and then we're going to put the thatched roof over top. I don't want that underneath where I'm going to paint, uh, and it's it's really hard to actually paint that uh, the shiny part of the cardboard. You could sand it, but it's really kind of a time consuming to do it that way. I'd rather just flip it this way, paint it that way. You gotta cover it with satch roof anyways, you're not gonna see it. Um, so that's why I did it uh, that way. So this is the multi-surface black craft paint to uh, my folk art that I always use. You can see that the domes are completed. Uh, I actually painted the bottom of this. Actually when the drywall compound was drying, uh, I think I mentioned this before, it counteracts any warping that may happen because I'm building it on foam. You could do it on uh, MDF or something like that and, and it probably wouldn't warp as much or it wouldn't warp at all probably. But I like to use uh, just cheap materials that I have around the house and I use dollar store foam board. So now we're going to make the satched roof portion of it. So I got some rope here. Uh, and these here, uh, I end up, uh, I have them on just like two inches on there, but I ended up making them three inches long when I actually did the roof. Uh, what I'm showing here, I'm just showing you how I, uh, I did it. So I just kind of separated them and then you get three chunks and you separate those again. And eventually you get what I'm, what I have there next to the scissors. So you get kind of a, 
it looks like hay or straw perfect for what we need for this thatched roof so all i really do is i apply the glue on first you know you know i just did sections uh not the whole thing all at once just small sections of it so i would uh cut a couple of pieces of rope pull it all out and then uh glue it on so this is just an intermediate stage here so i can you can see how i'm applying it Looks like I'm adding a hairline on a wig. <laughs> but anyways, that's what we're doing here. Uh, and then we're going to go one up layer over top to the peak. And then the very top, all I did was I took uh, one piece of, uh, of rope, uh, unraveled the whole thing, and then I twisted it and used uh, white glue to uh, keep it shape on the very top. And then I'll end up adding some uh, hobby uh, wire to it in a minute here. I uh, just wanted to show you the bottom. I just added a really basic, uh, that's willow, uh, the willow uh, uh, timbers there on the bottom. Just to give it a little basic shape like there's something holding the roof up. I didn't spend a whole lot of time underneath the roof lid. So that's that craft wire I was talking about. And I just wanted to tie up the very top. Uh, and then I just really, I added a whole bunch of white glue to the bottom of it. Stuck it to the top, made sure it was centered. And uh, let it dry there. And uh, it became a perfect handle to lift the roof up. So this is after everything is constructed. And now we're going to go to the final black craft paint uh, kind of uh, paint job. Now, originally, I was uh, had this crazy idea of doing the thatched roof and painting it, but uh, I abandoned that quickly. I actually kind of liked the way it looked. I did say, you know what, there's really no need to add any paint to this. I do end up adding some uh, egg rack air shader and, and a little bit of camel on there. But other than that, uh, nothing else. So the bases are all covered in their black paint. They're dry. They're ready to roll. Uh, same with the uh, under portion of these lids. And uh, now I'm going to move to the real brown. So this is very similar to what you've seen me do before. Uh, we're going to spend a little bit of time on here just showing you how I paint them. I, I tend to keep showing you guys this mainly because there's there's new people always on here uh, watching these videos for the first time and, and they've never seen me actually actually do this technique. So... I just figure if I add a few minutes of it in here, just to kind of give you an idea of how I apply the paint, uh, I think that might be valuable for some people. So, and it varies, like it differs uh, depending on what you're painting, right? If I'm painting the docks and uh, like we did last week with those sandbags and uh, I painted them a little differently, how I add the undertones. But you can see I'm just kind of rubbing it on, not really uh, putting a whole lot on there. Because I still want to keep some of the black undertones. And same when I go to the uh, bark brown, the next color, I want to keep some of the real brown undertones. Uh, and uh, this one's a little simpler to paint, to be honest. Uh, less colors to put on. Uh, mainly because I want to keep that mud look. So once I've added the, the bark brown, and of course we're going to move to the Pablo... You're pretty well done the walls, uh, which, you know, it saves a time saver. These are actually fairly easy to paint. I think the longest part of this project was waiting for the drywall compound to, to dry, and I guess the original black coat that took some time. So you can see I'm just kind of uh, hitting it into some areas in the middle just to lighten it up, just like there's a little, little lighter shading in there. Uh, not a whole lot. Okay, so now that's all done. Uh, let's gonna move to that Pablo. And this is really going to kind of sell that uh, mud look to it. Um, again, be a little uh, little less on this one. You're like, you can just see I'm just white, smearing it, just barely touching it. You don't need to put a lot of this on here. Um, but I, I, I do like that uh, way it uh, highlights on this uh, area. And it really gives that mud look to the walls uh, that I'm looking for on this particular piece. Now other projects I would have keep on going, but this is a mud wall, it's not a stone wall, so we're gonna leave it the way it is. Um, and uh, that's the perfect color for it. So then I add a little bit in, inside the lid too, just to lighten it up a little bit. Just to give it, actually kind of looks more like a weathered piece of leather, but <laughs> again, like I said, I didn't do a whole lot. You could do a lot more with the uh, inside of the lid if you wanted to. I would add contemplated doing like a whole bunch of wooden structures on there and uh, really elaborate but uh you know what i decided to, uh, i don't really need that nobody's going to see that anyways uh you know so i just wanted to have a basic design on there 
All right, so now the camel. Now, I did put some camel in the thatched roof. So I, I painted the roof black, if you remember. Uh, and there's a few areas where it was a little too black. So I decided to add a little bit of that camel to it, which actually was a little bit darker than the thatched roof was. So it actually made it look a little shaded. And, of course, I, I touch all the stones with it. So that's what I'm showing you here in the video. i am just got a, kind of a small flat brush, and I'm just, you know, touching up all these stones in here. Did add a little bit on the, the timbers here to give it a little bit of a weathering. I find that uh, uh, weathered wood in Africa is more uh, have a, kind of a lighter yellow color. Probably because it's in the desert, I imagine. I, I have no idea. But uh, when you look at it in North America, it turns more gray. Um, and it does turn that way in Africa too. But uh, I've seen a lot of it just... Uh, when you see dried wood, it actually turns yellow uh for whatever reason so maybe it's just a type of tree uh like i said i'm not a expert on that but i just noticed that observe observed that when i was uh, looking at examples of these huts so this is desert yellow skeleton bone mummy robe i didn't put any of that uh, necrotic flesh because there's no plant life here and i used some ajax uh earth shader on the satch roof near the top there and then the last step was adding some battlefield ground and some sand. I kind of wanted to have more of a gravel bottom than a grass bottom because it's in the African plains. Uh, and we got a few uh, tufts that I put on here. And then these are uh, Zulu shields that I've added. Now, you don't have to add these if you don't want. I'm planning on using this for blood and steel uh, in my Zulu village. Uh, I know they're uh, Perry miniatures, uh, those shields. Are for, I have some leftovers left from the army I built. So I wanted to put a couple of shields on either side of the door. Again, you don't need to put that on there. I just put those on there because I plan on using this for blood and steel and a very specific uh, tribe that I want to use it for. So. so there's blood and steel. There's the book right there, the instruction manual. I do recommend uh, you guys checking that out. It's a really cool uh, uh, game. Uh, I really like the rule set for it, uh, and uh, has, it covers a lot of areas, the whole Victorian area. So you got all sorts of different armies that you can build, uh, and uh, for me, I love to build terrain. So there's uh, endless supply of different types of terrain that I can build for uh, Blood and Steel. So I'm pretty excited about that. So this is kind of after it's all completed. Just wanted to show you. We've got some English uh, infantry here uh, uh, attacking this uh, this Zulu village. We got some Zulu riflemen there, and we got some uh, uh, warriors as well. And I'm just showing you the insides of these these uh, huts that we built. Overall, pretty happy how this project went. Actually, I'm really happy. I think I'm going to use this thatch roof technique uh, in the future. All right, everybody, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.